In this short video, I'm going to show you how you can use the package called Meteostat or the library in Python called Meteostat to download and visualize weather related data such as temperature, precipitation, so on and so forth. Uh, just for your notes, the link to this Google Colab notebook is in the description section of this video. So you can go there, click on that link, and then follow with me if you want to. You do not need to install anything. Everything is done on Google Cloud. Okay, um, these are the steps that we are going to take. On a map, we are going to interactively select a location, select a point, choose the date range, download the data, and then select the variables that we want to visualize. Let's say that we want to visualize minimum, maximum, and average temperature, and then visualize it and save the data in a CSV comma separator format. Okay, so all the steps um, I have explained over here, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time explaining what different lines do. Rather, I'm going to show you how you can run the code and how you can visualize and save the data. So this first line, essentially, it's going to install the Meteostat uh, package in Python. When you click on it, um, it will install, if it's the first time that you're doing it, it will install it for you. Um, if you don't want to see this anymore, you can close this right here. I have provided an explanation of the libraries and packages that I have used in this code. And if you want to learn more about Meteostat, you can click over here and go to the website and learn more about it. I have provided some explanation about how Meteostat interpolate to find um, weather the weather vari variables in the location that you select. This cell essentially imports all these uh, libraries, and then we are going to apply a theme for the plot that we are going to generate. Um, I want to explain that these pieces of um, code, they could be all in one cell, but because I wanted to explain what each one do, I put them in different cells. And then here, for example, um, I'm going to create a widget to be able to handle selection of the date and everything. So here it gives you specifically when the widget is created, what you need to do step by step. Oops, I need to remove this. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to run this code next. And then here I'm going to essentially introduce some global variables to store the latitude and longitude when they are generated. Here is a description of all the headers of the data that will be downloaded eventually. You can see that you can have access to all of these data. I'm going to run that code. Um, next, this is going to essentially, this is a cell that is going to generate the map. And this map um, is going to help you to select the location that you want to. So I'm going to run that. As you can see, when I run these, they do not do anything yet because I haven't run um, the main main part of the code yet. These are these parts are going to help me to set up that main part. And if you want to learn more about each part of these, you can read the tu the tutorial description that I have over there. Um, over here, I'm going to run this again and tell you a little bit more about it. These are again widgets that allow you to select the date, a drop down that allows you to select the data that you want to, uh, and a button for visualization, so on and so forth. Um, eventually, you are going. To, we have a we have a function for the download button. So when we press a download button, the function is going to be called and download the data for the selected date. Um, and again, there's another function to visualize and plot the data for the selected date. All right, when you have all of these things, the last cell is the cell that is going to show you the widgets that you have created. So when I run this cell, you can see the map shows up over here. So you can zoom in in any area that you want to. Let's zoom in in Minneapolis, and I'm going to select the point right over here, maybe next to the uh, Minneapolis St. Paul Airport. There we go. This is my point. And the next, next, as you can see over here, is choose the start and end date. So the start date, let's go all the way back to October 1st of 2023. And the end date, let's select yesterday right over here. 
And when you click download data, now it's calling that function for downloading the data. And then it shows the columns that you can download, the data that is available. So remember, we wanted average temperature, minimum temperature, and maximum temperature. So I'm going to hold control on my keyboard and select average, minimum, and maximum temperature. And when they are selected, I'm going to visualize and save that after a couple of seconds. You can see that it gives me average, minimum, and maximum temperature over here. And if you go under this folder, you can see that um, average, minimum, and maximum temperature is downloaded over here. The reason that you have used to have precipitation and you have two of these because I was just running this code as a test to see how it uh, uh, looks like before. Now, let's say you want to download uh, wind speed as well. You select wind speed and then visualize and save and it will visualize wind speed for you right over here and wind speed is downloaded over here for the period that you selected. Okay so pretty actually easy pretty straightforward. I encourage you to click in the link in the description and read the description for each part of the code to familiarize yourself with with what each part does. And the last thing that I want to mention, if you want to download any of these CS CSVs, first of all, if you double click on it, it will give you a preview of how it looks like. And if you want to download it, you can click on this three dots over here and download that locally in your drive as well. All right. Hope that you liked this tutorial. If you have any other ideas of what kind of tutorials you want to see, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below.